Today is uh, Sunday in uh, Edmonton, and I'm talking to Nathaniel Scott, and he is in India, and he has something to discuss, uh, something relating to his uh, potential visit to Canada. Let's look at the situation and let's see if we have a solution. Uh, Nathaniel Scott, uh, welcome to the show. Are you calling me from uh, India? Yes, I'm calling you from India, from Bangalore, uh, down south. Yeah, tell me, tell me briefly what what is the problem. So, um, I'll, I'll just give you a quick background and then get get to the pain point, right? Uh, that I think may be an issue in, in my visa application. Okay. So, I was born a Hindu. I come from a Hindu family. Yeah. Uh, Hindu South Indian family, and yeah. uh, I had a Hindu name uh, by birth. So, just uh, to to give you an idea. So my previous name was uh, uh, Sandeep Kumar. Okay, that was my Hindu name. And uh, later I met my wife uh, over a travel website. And uh, she she's Canadian of European origin. And she's a Canadian citizen. She's a white Canadian basically. And she is from Quebec. Uh, and uh, we were in touch for two years, uh, long distance, uh, over Skype and other forms of communication. And then finally, she decided that she would move to India to be with me uh, after getting married. So in 2018, September, she landed in India, in Bangalore. And uh, we had a registered marriage here at one of the sub-registers office in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, in in uh, October 2018. So legally, the marriage was uh, recognized. And uh, she also got the, uh, she declared to the Canadian government that she's going to get married to me, to a non-Canadian. And she got a, a certificate of no objection. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, was, let's jump, let's jump, jump to the conclusion here. Yeah, what, what, what is the, I understand the story, how this all built up. What is the problem? What is the, confusion and the legal problem so there is uh, see uh, confusion so in my uh, in my uh, marriage certificate the name is still the he old he hindu name right so mm -hmm. I'm, i've not had the chance to convert it to my new name mm -hmm. and the new name was uh, permitted by the central government of india I went to Delhi and uh, submitted an application to the Department of Publications there, uh, fulfilling the legal formalities. And I changed my religion from Hindus, Hinduism to Christianity. Mm. Uh, and also, basis that, I converted my old name to this new name that I have currently. And this was published in the Gazette of India. So officially, it is published by the Central Government of India. And I... it is accepted across India. I, I, I understand. I understand, sir. Sir, can we come to the question? What is the question? I understand what is happening. I understand the background and the name change and the following the government of India rules to do this. What is your problem as of right now for going to Canada? So the problem right now, there are two points. One is, will the old name in my marriage certificate Will that be an impediment in proving that I'm, I'm the same person that was married to my wife? Yeah. That is the what, first question. What, what is the and, and question? Yeah. And also the second question is that in my... So I own an apartment in Bangalore and this was purchased when I had the old name. Yeah. So in the in the sale agreement, this old name still remains. I have, I have not converted it to the new name. So yeah. I have to show that I have strong ties with India, my home country, to the Canadian authorities. Also, when I furnish this as a proof of strong ties to India, as a proof of asset, will that affect my application? Because I have not yet converted my property to the new name. Because uh, it's an expensive procedure to do that basically okay is that is that all uh, that's that's the question that's that's it and and also is there any other uh, uh, medium or or proof that i have to 
attach as per my application uh, for my application to show that I have strong ties to India other than the proof of asset. OK, so let's let's tackle these questions uh, briefly. Uh, quickly so you have a relationship with a canadian citizen that's that's fine so you are looking to go there to canada you can travel you can apply for visa you can apply for immigration whatever uh, as far as the name change is concerned it has no effect on your on your application uh, because uh, the name change was done legally you have uh, sufficient proof that you change it and once you fill the application, whichever application form you're filling for Canada, all you do is just provide them that this was also the name. The previous name was also used uh, by you. So uh, so there's no problem. Uh, just just ensure just ensure that you keep all your documents ready. For example, all your legal uh, change of name document, any court order, any publication to the, to the Gazette. Uh, wherever that you done. So just ensure that you you maintain all those documents whenever you are making an application. Just show them it has it has uh, it has no effect on the eligibility of the application of the of the category that you are doing. So I have no problem with that. The second is as far as your uh, residential property and other things that you use uh, your name, your previous name continuing. It has no problem at all as well as as long as you submit your legal name change document to accompany your main applications. The Canadian visa officer has no problem with your name change. You can change your name 100 times in your life if you if you want to, as as long as you have the the necessary documents to show what happened and why that's that's OK with them. Uh, also, sir, uh, I my plan is to apply for a six month visit visa yeah. to, Can to Canada to start with because I want to relocate to Canada to reunify with my family. OK, uh, my wife and son uh, who are both Canadian citizens are in Quebec uh, in Canada. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm planning to travel in the month of September. Yeah, uh, so is there a possibility that once I'm there and I'm there for six months that I will be able to convert that to, to a spousal visa? Well, let's 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 uh, dissect this problem uh, uh, stage by stage. If you have a, a traveling visa, like a temporary visa to go to Canada, any kind of visa, whether it's visitor visa, or study visa, or work visa, yes, that entitles you to go to Canada uh, based on the uh, even even bypassing the restrictions here because you're an immediate family member of a Canadian citizen. If you if you end up in Canada, yes, and if she. Uh, files a uh, spousal sponsorship for you, which is uh, processed within Canada. Yes, you can convert that temporary visa into a work permit initially and wait till the processing of your spousal application will be complete. That takes close to about one year for now uh, in ordinary circumstances. But yes, you will get some work permits. That means if you have a visitor visa, you'll be able to convert this into a, a open work permit, which is a LMIA exempt work permit given to spouses of uh, uh, you know, people who have been sponsored by the Canadian citizens. So that's that's a possibility. Yes. Uh, and sir, uh, I have currently, uh, or, or by the first of September, I will have eleven thousand eight hundred uh, Canadian dollars in my account. Yeah. Is is that enough uh, in terms of uh, funds to be shown to the Canadian immigration authorities for the? Canada visitor visa for six months. I, I don't know. I, I cannot answer this question. Uh, uh, this money, whether it's uh, sufficient or not, there's no formula in the in the system to show how much money we need. It all depends on a case by case evaluation of your purpose. What is the purpose? Why are you going there? When will you come back? What are your ties to India and so forth? So there's no set formula. So uh, I cannot answer that question. Also, I have a financial sponsor in Canada, uh, who is my, uh, which is my uh, father-in-law. So my father-in-law is going to send me a letter of invitation, clearly stating that uh, yeah. he will sponsor my visit there. Apart from the funds I'm going to show for the visa, is that sufficient for the visitor visa, or is there anything no. other than that? Uh as I as I said, let me let me give you my little summary about the visit visit visa. A visit visa is the most mysterious application on this planet uh, for US and Canada and other countries perhaps. For a visit visa, 
they have to look at the entire case history, your uh, plan, your background, your funds, your purpose, your ties to country of residence, and those those uh, you know combination of these factors. There is absolutely no specific mathematical formula or any other proven uh, formula like a scientist formula to show that if you do this, then you will get the tourist visa. If you don't do this, then you will not get the tourist visa. No lawyer, no consultant on this planet knows this formula. It is done on a case by case scenario on on the complete picture that you present. Uh, and then then they decide. So I, I do not have a specific concrete answer to you that do this and then you'll get the visit visa. Don't do this and then you will avoid uh, getting rejected. There's no specific answer to this question. Yes, for sure. Uh, they will look at your background, your travel history, your immigration history, your uh, employment, your income. Uh, why are you going there? What are your specific plans? What will you do uh, there? And you know, what are your chances of returning? Uh, is it essential for you to go there? They will look at all these factors and make a balanced approach. And unfortunately, you know, I made this. I made a, uh, some videos in the past, uh, and uh, many applications, uh, especially visit visa applications uh, from India, China, and I think Turkey. Uh, they have they are being uh, processed and analyzed through an artificial intelligence uh, analytical system. So that means no human assessment is being uh, applied to your to your factors of application. So we don't know how the computer how the system will analyze your application. Uh, and sometimes uh, they do get rejected. Then you can appeal and reapply and you know challenge them if you want to. But uh, anything goes as far as tourist visa applications uh, is concerned for Canada. Okay. Also, I'm currently employed with a company in Mumbai. I'm working from home from Bangalore. Uh, yeah. Would it be a good idea to mention that I'm currently employed and that I? It's always. To... A, it's always. I, I have a. I have a general. I have a general principle. I have a general formula for all applications to U.S. and Canada. The formula is very easy to remember. Just tell the truth. What is what is my formula? The formula is very simple. Tell the truth. Tell the honest facts. So if you are working, tell them you are working. If you are not working, tell them you are not working. Sometimes people are okay. clever. Sometimes they think if I do not have a job, but I can tell the visa officer I have a job, maybe I can hoodwink them into getting a visa. And sometimes nobody will know. That does not happen too often, all right? Sometimes you will get trapped and maybe banned for five years. So the formula is very clear from my side. Tell the truth. Always speak the truth. And whether you, whether or not you get the visa, but it'll, you'll always be in the safe hands. You'll always be in, in safe confidence, you know, no matter whether you have to apply multiple times, but you'll always feel good that you have always spoken the truth. And perhaps eventually you'll get the visa, you know, some years later, or at least you'll not be in some kind of immigration trouble with the with the government. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, also coming to the point of uh, travel history, in the last two years, I've only traveled to Nepal, uh, and before that, I didn't have a passport. Uh, it was only in the in the in the end of uh, 2019 that uh, my I. I applied for a passport and got my passport and later i changed the passport with a with uh, with the name change uh, by uh, providing the gazette of india publication uh, and and it was my wife who traveled from canada to india and we got married in india itself like i said um, also this travel history i cannot prove this travel history because nepal you may know that nepal allows indian citizens uh, to travel either by passport or voter id I have so answered your question, sir. Sir, I I understand your question. Uh, yeah, it is not important whether you can prove it or not. What is important is whether you are telling them the truth. So if it asks you what is your travel history, if you have if you have traveled to Kathmandu, if you have traveled to Nepal, you tell them that you have traveled. That's it. So do not worry about do not worry about what they will do with this information. It is not in your area of jurisdiction to understand how this will be uh, decided. So it's like the it's like the philosophy of Shri Krishna. You know, you do your action, let them do their 
own own uh, you know analysis on your actions and and you know you wait for the results so the results the the outcome of the visa application is not in your hand you do the do the needful let somebody else worry about the results so when they say that you have you traveled if you have traveled to nepal you don't have to worry about whether you can prove it or not what you have to worry about is whether i'm telling the truth yeah yeah so i yeah. So i mean just, even if just tell, asked, just tell the truth just tell the truth and let them let them worry about how they will uh, look at those facts sure sir and uh, one last question sir um, but what is the process uh, currently since uh, the canadian immigration offices opened in july and there's a backlog uh, i i went on to the canada immigration website to check if there is a, if there's any way to expedite my visa application for the visit visitors visa there's no and there's uh, no i'll I'll, t- i'll tell i'll tell you clearly there's no process or there's no special strategy to expedite your application over other pending applications uh yes if you have a pressing need if your need is of a urgent nature there's a email listed on the immigration website you can have you have to go to the immigration website and search for it it is it is listed under the heading of essential services uh you can email your profile you can tell them what what is that urgent uh you know situation and uh, uh you will get a response from them i believe close to about a week now Uh, and they will let you know if they acknowledge your urgency perhaps i'm just giving example i'm not saying that this mm-hmm. this pertains to you i'm just giving yeah, one or yeah. two examples perhaps somebody is dying in a family some somebody needs uh, you know urgent medical help somebody you know something some somebody has to sign those legal documents without their signature those cannot happen i mean these are some some examples but they could yeah, be yeah. you know who knows thousands of others so if they if they acknowledge that there is a serious uh you know urgent uh, nature of the trip they will they will let you know and they will you know you know possibly pick your application out of the bunch but uh you have to apply just like anybody else just apply online perhaps if you want uh and then uh, uh once you get the file number let them know this is my file number and you have a urgent situation and that they will decide that's all i can say uh and and uh, as per your experience with the applications in the last two months Uh, starting from july onwards uh, what is the average processing time they they are taking for a visitor visa from application from india uh, do you have any- my uh, yes le- let me be very honest uh, to you and other people who are watching this i do not apply visit, visit visa and i have not applied visit visa for anybody in this whole year uh perhaps even in the latter part of last year as well i only apply for spouse visa for people and for spouse visas which were applied through my office uh, they have been pending for more than 4 months 5 months sometimes even 6 months so uh so that is my my uh you know my view about the processing time i do not apply for visit visa so i do not know the answer how long the visit visas will be held for processing all right uh, that's all from from me mr amajot and and uh, it was really informative to talk to you as okay. usual and i am I'm, i'm a great follower of your uh, videos i i think you're doing a great job in helping people uh, untangle themselves from uh, consultants uh, unscrupulous consultants who charge a lot of money <laughs> I, um, Yeah. even in bangalore i have gone to two consultants in the past y axis and opulentus i'm yeah. just giving you the names yeah because they're quite reputed i i know the and, names uh, i've been i've been to i've been to hyderabad couple of times more than 3 4 times i think now and i've been to bangalore uh, and hyderabad is one of my favorite cities in india by the way i all i I've, i've said this many times in my video uh, that uh, one of my favorite places to live and work is in hyderabad and i and i know there are many uh, uh you know immigration consultants and and so called immigration experts and specialists in hyderabad and uh, still people are getting deceived and duped and you know taken a right for wrong information yeah but, uh, but that's certainly i i i can agree with that point because uh, from my personal experience with both viaxis and opulentus uh, i've spoken to the most senior most 
immigration consultants there. So I, I posed this question about my name change, the Gazette of India publication. And, and they have told, um, they've given me advice that, oh, you know, your marriage will be regarded as fake uh, and, until you convert it and, and get a new marriage certificate in the new name. No, no, and that, that, that will never and, happen, no. Yeah, so um, I can vouch for, you know, uh, your observations on immigration consultants who claim to be experts, but unfortunately, they are cut totally cut off from the process. Uh, a lot of technicality, they're not aware about them, and, and they end up misleading and hurting uh, applicants' interests as well. Yeah. Well, I, I, Scott, I, I hope uh, everything works out for you, and uh, we, we record this kind of conversation so that other people who are in the same, uh, you know, same conundrum, or maybe they are following uh, your, your footsteps into this name change and other, you know, traveling, they may also get a little idea, at least a little bit clue on how not to, you know, do mistakes so that, you know, they can benefit as well. So, hey, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I hope uh, uh, everything and, uh, thank works you, Mr. out. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would just like to add a last bit of information for okay. anyone interested in name change in India. Yeah. Um, in India, <laughs> even lawyers are unaware of the procedure. Uh, they advise you to go to the court and, and file a suit and then get an order from the court, which is a lengthy process. Actually, the easiest way is to ap approach the Department of Publications in the central government in Delhi, in New Delhi. And uh, they have a standard process wherein you have to furnish certain documents for change of name, change of religion and other particulars. And... Uh, once they are satisfied with your documentation, they publish it in the Gazette of India. And, and Gazette of India is uh, recognized in India and uh, also across the world for all official purposes. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this might help a lot of people because I struggled with it, uh, with all these uh, le legal formalities for close to two years, uh, running around a court for an order, uh, which never happened because <laughs> the judge herself didn't know what was the procedure here. Hey, I, I appreciate your I appreciate your contribution to this discussion, and I and I thank you for the input that you have provided for other people so that they can be helped by doing these kind of name changes. And I know, uh, especially in marriages where wives have to change their names, uh, you know, last names, surnames, and other things, uh, they may also find it very helpful. So, hey, thank you very much, Scott. I'll talk to you later. Uh, if you come to Canada, whenever you come to Canada, give me a call, and then uh, perhaps you know. I'd like to follow up on your progress. Sure, certainly. All Thank right. you very much, okay. sir, for your time, and you have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.